Hi, this is Steve Melvin, Extension Educator with the University of Nebraska Lincoln Extension. And today we're going to talk more about how to schedule irrigation using soil water data. This is chapter three, and in this chapter we're going to talk about some simple irrigation scheduling techniques that can be used very quickly to make good irrigation scheduling decisions. First, a quick review of this diagram to help us remember what we're talking about. You remember the very temporary storage water is above field capacity and it is represented over here on this loam soil as about two inches of water and it is represented by the color blue. And the reason I'm reviewing that is we're going to have a chart here in the next couple slides that relates to these colors. There's also available water, which is the water between field capacity and permanent wilting point. This is the water that area where we're managing with our irrigation scheduling. And if you take a look, it relates over here to these yellow and green bars through the middle of the range. It again represents about two inches of water. This is the chart. It's a soil water conversion chart. And this is set up to help you convert watermark sensor reading numbers. And if you take a look at the way that it's set up, this one specifically for silt loam soils, there's 11 different of these charts and therefore uh, different soils. And you need to have the correct chart for the soil that you're in. And they're set up with a blue category at the top that's above field capacity. There's also a rain storage zone that's just below field capacity. And the reason for that is that we would like to have some room in our soil profile to store a rainfall event if we get one. And so we would like to keep at least one sensor a little bit drier than field capacity. There's also the green desired water zone and that is where we really would like to have our sensors. That way we don't have very much deep percolation if any and we are have plenty of water to keep our crop fully watered. We also have the low water zone, which is when we're getting pretty dry and we would like to irrigate before we get down into this. Maybe one sensor could be here, but we certainly don't want more than that. So the idea is that this chart can be used along with your logger out in the field. You can just look up the number and make some decisions with it. We're gonna spend a little bit of time here going over the different things that relate to each of the columns and show you how to use it. The first one we're going to talk about is irrigation scheduling using the chart management zones. And that's what is on the clear right hand side of the chart. It has some advantages in that it's simple and easy to make quick decisions. Do not need to look at the numbers or do any calculations. However, the disadvantage is there's less accurate than calculating the water levels and you need some experience to make good irrigation scheduling decisions. So let's take a look at an example. I think that's always the best way to take a look at it. And we've got a corn at the silk stage. We know that's the most sensitive time for the corn crop. The top foot, and we've got four sensors out here, and each of them represent one foot of soil. And the top one is reading 15. The second one is reading 100. And the CBs is for centibars. The third one is 70. And the fourth one is 33 centibars. Now we look at the chart there in the middle, we can see that corn at the silking stage has a rooting depth of about three feet. So right now we will not use that deeper sensor because the corn roots are probably not down there just yet. And so we would not want to do irrigation scheduling based on that. So if we take a look then, the most left-hand column in there is where the watermark readings are on the chart. If we take a look, we'll put 15 in. That's Remember, that's for our top foot. We'll put a 100 in. That was where our second foot was at. And we'll put a 70 in for where the third foot is at. And so from that, we can see that we have one sensor that's above field capacity and in the blue zone, we know that's excellent water and that is the top one as well. And then the next two down are down in that desired water zone. So let's set up a scenario. Let's say that two nights from now, it's, we're seeing a forecast for some significant rainfall and a high percentage of that. And the corn's at silk stage, knowing that it's the most sensitive time for the corn, and so should we turn the center pivot on today or not, knowing that it's going to take about three and a half days for the pivot to go around. If it doesn't rain, you know, it's going to be five and a half days before the rest of that field gets fully watered. So what do we do? Well, I think there's some more accuracy that we can get as we move forward. I probably would maybe turn the pivot on in this situation, but let's go ahead and we'll take a look at a little bit more information here and see what we might decide if we take a look at this whole idea with these color bands, most every system that's out there on the market today that has any kind of an analysis with it has these color bands that you can take a look at. This is an example of some data from a field where the corn you know, had good yield 
and uh, certainly not any water stress throughout the year. But you can see it, it's a good way to take a look at the data. You can make some good quick decisions with it. So let's take a look at irrigation scheduling using percent of plant available water. That's the second column. And if you see, field capacity is 100% of plant available water, which you would expect. As we go up into the blue zone, we get up into numbers greater than 100%. Remember, this is that water that's above field capacity. It will drain away over time, but we can certainly use that water before it goes away. Our plants can, can utilize it. And so, you know, if there's a half inch of water up there and we're using 30 hundreds a day and a couple days before that has a chance to drain away in a silt loam soil, the crop will use it. If we take a look then as the numbers go below, they get less than 100, and that is the percent of plant available water as we go down the list. So advantages of using this, very intuitive number to use. It's just a percent of the plant of the water that's left. Very simple to determine using this chart. Provides good indications of adequacy of water for the crop. The disadvantages are less accurate than calculating the volume of water in the root zone, but it still does require some calculation. So let's look through an example with this as well. Again, you can see on the right there that at the top of this chart would be about 157% of plant available water. Field capacity is 100, and then it drops down from there. So let's take a look at the example that we have. The corn, again, it's at the silk stage. It's the same scenario we had with the last one. We've already got the numbers drawn in there. So if we take a look again at the second column, the top one, we would have 15 and that would represent 125 percent so we would put that over on this box that we've got the next one is 100 which would be 56 percent of plant available water so we put that in the chart as well the third one then is 70 or 68 percent of plant available water we put that one in there you can see if we add all three of those together we have a number now that we can simply divide by three to get the percent of plant available water which in this case is 83 percent so now let's go back again to our scenario. Two days from now, we've got a significant rain event forecast, a high percentage chance of that. It takes three and a half days to get the center pivot around. So are we gonna start the pivot today or are we gonna wait and see if it rains? Now I'm getting a little bit more confident that I can probably wait and see if it rains. But if it doesn't, then get the pivots running right away. But if it does, then we can hold off a little bit. Again, remember this is corns at the silk stage, which is indeed the most critical time of year. So this chart, if you're interested in it, is part of a, a new University of Nebraska Extension publication, EC3036, entitled Irrigation Scheduling Strategies Using Soil Water Data. And if you would like, you can do a search on that or, or the URLs listed there as well. So this completes Chapter 3, a couple of the simple irrigation scheduling techniques that we can use. Please join me for Chapter 4 when we'll get to talking about a little bit more advanced irrigation scheduling techniques.